Good morning. Happy Monday to you, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend and hope you had a great training weekend as always. Today, I want to continue on with my clicker training series. And let me just kind of give a little disclaimer right up front here. I am not an expert practitioner in clicker training with dogs. I'm just going to put that out there right now. For over a decade, I trained marine mammals for Explosive Ordnance Disposal Mobile Unit 3 out of San Diego, California. So I'm very well versed in shaping behaviors for marine mammals using a whistle and using fish. However, I'm not using a clicker in a tree. But I'm going to do the best I can. And what I'm going to be also doing is referencing two books that are out there on clicker training, notably one by Karen Pryor, Clicker Training Itself. And so I'll just be referring back and forth to it and just give it the best shot that I can. Because at the end of the day, the reason why I don't, I'm not an expert practitioner in clicker training is because essentially I just don't believe in it. I think it's great for marine mammals when you don't have a choice. You have no choice. There's no other way to get them to do something unless you have treats, unless you can shape a behavior. But I lived it for 10 years and I watched one animal after another refuse to work, refuse to obey over and over and over again. There were so many missions that were not able to be completed because we had uncooperating animals. And it, it is what it is. And therefore, I'm, I'm a believer that in order to lower your blood pressure with your dog, to have a dog that you really enjoy, a dog that will just bring you joy, bring joy for them, bring safety for everyone, you have to have reliability. You have to. And that will only be achieved by, a, by applying a cost, a cost benefit. The way nature works, the way wolves work against wolves, dogs work against dogs. This thing here where you're just going to, Lord, uh, so anyway, I'm not going to say any more of that. We're going to move forward with it today. I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to work my way through it. But just know this. I'm taking one for the team here. I'm taking one for you guys because I should go ahead and put it out there, put out the pros and cons behind it, put out the things I see as a fault with it. So you, you can make your own decision regarding what methodology and how you want to train your dog. Okay, so today we're moving on. Yesterday we went over to sit. Today we're going to move into the down and the heel. Kellogg, come on over here, buddy. So I'll move a little bit away from the camera. Okay, remember yesterday we had to click, and once we clicked, we gave a treat. All right, so now what we've done is that the clicker is no longer a neutral stimulus. It has now become a conditioned stimulus. It truly has. When Captain hears the thing go click, bam, there goes those ears, and he's looking for me to hand him a treat. Step one, done over. Then we use the treats to shape the behavior sit. Rock the hand over the head. When he sits, we give a treat, and then sometimes we want to create uh, more duration in the set, not break the set, then we will delay the giving of the treat and the giving of the click. We'll just make the dog sit, wait 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, whatever. And at some given point, you do the old click and you give the treat. Okay, so now that we've done that, Kelly, come around here, buddy. And you'll find out in a second why I have them tied to my waist, okay? But just go with me for now. All right, so now we got our dog here in the sit. So let's say I went through all that stuff and I created a sit. Here comes the next step. Now you take the treat, got it in your hand, kind of like a luring. It's really a lot of luring going on with this. And now all of a sudden, you take the hand, and if the dog starts to follow your hand, to like right there, you would click and give the treat. So remember in the first step to sit, how they had to look up. If they merely just looked up at your treat hand, then you clicked it. And you did that over and over again. And then all of a sudden, when they leaned back, you clicked it. And then when they put their butt to the ground, you clicked it. And then you started not clicking for several seconds, and then you would click, and so on and so forth. So now I'm going to do that again here. As soon as he starts to follow my hand, right there, I click and give him the treat. Okay, again, we're not saying any commands. That comes later. It comes later. Again, I'm, I'm scratching my head, figuring out why that is, and I understand you simply want the dog to be hyper-focused on the clicker itself, not on you talking and chatting away with your dog. All right, so once you get that happening, the dog is now following the hand, coming to the hand, lowering his head to the ground. Then you just systematically, step by step by step, finally getting the dog to go all the way to the ground. And like right there, his head went to the ground, and you click for that. Just merely putting the head on the ground. So right here, not saying a word, but there we go, stretch it out, and Captain stretches for it, and I click. Not using the word down. Over and over again, you do this thing. Breathe. Okay, so let me make sure you guys can see him. 
Okay, same thing. He's looking up here. He follows the hand. He follows the hand. He finally stretches out, and boom, we click. And then just like you would to create duration in this behavior, as in the sit, you just do the same thing. Once the animal lies down, you pull the tree hand away. If he holds it right then while you pull the tree hand away, you click and then get the tree. And then you dance from not just pulling the hand away, but putting your hands away, either in your pockets or behind your back, and you count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, boom, click, and there we go. And you just build your duration doing that. And then, of course, along the way, long way, <laughs> a long way away from this, you now start to introduce doing all this around other dogs, other people, and common distractors that you will encounter when you're training your dog using the clicker. All right, free. So there you go. That's it on the down in a nutshell. Come on over here, cow dog. All right, buddy, good. So now I, let's talk about how do we teach our dog to walk with us on a loose, loose leash. Okay, first of all, we're going to coax him to our left side, to our left side. So I'm gonna switch my little, I'm gonna go ahead and move my little treat bag around here. Well, actually I can't, cause I got cow dog tied to it. So never mind. <laughs> just found that out. Okay, so we'll make do here. I'm just gonna grab a couple of treats, put them in my hand over here and my left hand. Because what I'm going to do is tap my left leg and have him come to that left leg. I'm going to coax him over to my left leg. And that's the very first step you do for heel. So you're not really walking. You're just getting the dog interested and in trying to provoke the dog's attention, get its attention, and then have it come to your left leg. Take up a relative position next to your body. So it looks like this. I just tap my leg. He comes over here. I click and give him the treat. We'll do that a couple more times, free. And I'll tap my leg. No, he's here in the front, so I'm gonna tap my leg again. And again, over here, cat knows what to do. There we go. We click and give a treat. Here you go, cow dog, I dropped it. Okay, so again, I'm gonna tap my leg. Comes to my leg here, come to my leg. Right. Again, you're not supposed to be talking to the dog. I'm just trying to get him to cooperate again. He's never done clicker training in his life. So this would have to take a little bit of time here. Bring him over. Good. Bring him over again. Got the leg right there. Right as he gets by my left leg. That was a good one right there. I started to get you in the cattle dog to pick this up. Got my left leg. Show him. Show him this is a lot like Lurie. Bring them over here, tap, boom, right there. Good. So you do have to do a little bit of luring this. You just can't expect the dog to go, all right, so you're tapping your left leg. Am I supposed to come to that spot exactly? Or just come over here somewhere near you? It'd be like you going to someone going, hey, does that mean come right there in front of them? Come to the side of them? Whatever. Again, you're trying to get a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna do a combination of luring. That makes sense to me. Bring them over here, shave your head right there to my leg. Bingo, right there. So no doubt you've got to add some of that luring into it that you would do if you weren't clicker training your dog. You're just trying to train a young puppy, a lot of that luring. Okay, now the next step that you do is try to take some steps with the dog right there. Again, holding that little treat hand, and you start taking steps. And as you do, you click. And now they say to stop and not hand off the treat on the move. I. Again, I beg to differ because what am I rewarding? Walking with me or stopping when I stop? Again, I can add that stop with me later, but I'm just simply trying to get you to walk with me, remaining on one side of my body only and not pull me. So why can't I give the treat on the fly? But they say not to. Maybe someone can answer that for me. So I walk again, he's by my leg, I click, I give the treat. Ready? And we'll do this again. We're gonna walk, click, get the tree. And you know, it's like stop, I'm, I'm obeying the rules. We walk again, dog comes by my leg. Click. And you notice that when I click with him, pre, some of this is pre prior conditioning with him to sit 
when I come to a stop, recognize that my body is stopping, so he's supposed to sit. Okay, so now you do that. Then you just kind of click about every three steps, every five steps, every 10 steps, luring the dog by your left leg. When they show up, click initially, but then after that, don't click until you've traveled a little way. As the dog starts to stay close to you, I'm just gonna move off with Captain. He stays near me, like right there, turn. I'm gonna click and give it a little treat there. Again, you're, you're supposed to stop. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate to stop so everyone will be happy. And you're supposed to stop okay now once you do that then you just continue now to change directions a lot of turning left turns right turns about turns every time the dog moves into that position you click and then you treat you stop and treat so you click stop and treat click stop and treat and you just gradually grow this further and further and further until the dog gets the idea so i'm moving along with captain here Tapping my leg, trying to lure him over here to this spot. Lure him to this spot. There we go. And I'm going to get that treat. I'm going to lure him back over to the spot here. There we go. Good. And the whole reason I told you a while ago, the reason why that leash is tied to my waist is because when you're doing this, it's only for safety. It's if the dog runs off. It keeps the dog from running away from you. This is supposed to just have the dog attached to you, tethered to you, and you're not supposed to manipulate the dog in any way with the leash. The dog is doing this out of free will, and through exploratory learning, through investigating, to guessing, all these sort of things. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. You gotta be clicking with one hand, you gotta be getting a treat. But again, remember, you're not supposed to be able to say good boy faster than you can click. Again, I, I disagree with that as well. Hold up. So he comes over by me. Good boy. See, I can do that a lot faster than my thumb can find this little button on this little clicker here. Okay, but again, following the books. Okay, so now moving on from there. Okay, I'm going to read this straight from the book. What if the dog sees or smells something he wants to investigate? Then charges to the end of the leash and starts pulling. Well, what you're supposed to do is stop and stand still. While the dog is pulling, nothing happens. When the dog slackens, click and treat. Okay. So again, let me just kind of throw this out there. I got my, my little old lady client. All about 90 pounds soaking wet, trying to walk a 90 pound dog. Dogs can pull a minimum of four to 10 times their own body weight. You come to a stop with this thing around your waist and you could find yourself being dragged flat on your face, straight out into a highway, straight to the other dog, straight to whatever the dog wants to go to. And the more you lean back, the more it pulls because of opposition reflex. It's a reflex. It's not even a conscious thought given by the dog. Okay, so here's the next thing that comes up in that book. Let the dog discover that when he pulls, nothing happens. Nothing happens to him, maybe, but a whole lot can happen to you. But if the leash is slack, you will move toward the other dog. Now, you will move toward the other dog. When the leash goes slack, you allow him to go ahead and move toward the other dog, or the new person, or the hydrant, or whatever he wants to investigate. Okay, I said a long time ago, my leadership is not distributed. If I want to go to that new dog, to that person, to that hydrant, then we shall go, me and the dog. But we don't go to that new dog or to that new person or to that hydrant because the dog wants to go. No, I'm not setting conditions where you get to dictate what I do. Hey, Brian, come to a stop. Good boy, Brian. Click, have a M&M. &M. And then we'll just take this up again. So you pull a little more. I stop, you stop, leash goes slack, click, I get a treat, and then we pull a little more. And this thing just keeps happening and keeps happening. And at the end of the day, the animal learns. Okay. So again, remember, intelligent animals learn through free exploration and mimicry. I've learned something here. I pull, yeah, it goes slack, I get a treat, I get to pull again. And at some point, I will get to whatever it is that I'm determined to get to. Period. I will get there regardless of what that human's doing. 
and I'll get treats along the way. No, how about we just go, hey, no, we're actually going to walk this way over here. Love you, little buddy, but we're going this way. That's what we're going to do. Structure. Watch the video on structure. Yeah, there's a minefield when you're around me, cattle dog. But I make sure that you can see all the mines. You can see them all. If you step on one, it's your fault. Not mine. Yeah. So again, taking one for the team here. I'm trying to move along, but none of this makes any darn sense to me whatsoever. Not whatsoever. Just working my way through it. So again, how about if we just take the darn leash off and we just kind of move along here. Yeah, hold on. Let's go, buddy. So now, why don't we just move along? Why don't you kind of go without a leash? Don't worry about that. Come on, man. Atta boy. Now, why don't we do that? How about that? Free cattle dog. Good job, buddy. Good job. Sorry, I forgot to click. All right. Sorry about that. I promise I'll be more more professional in the upcoming series and clickers but this is my job i've got your back and my job right now is to make sure that you keep the dog you have that you don't just keep it you don't just survive with the dog you thrive with the dog you keep the dog because you want to keep it and the only way that's going to happen is if that dog cooperates with you in your life it does some of your bidding it bends a knee every now and then it has to. It has to. I've trained marine mammals. I told you. I got to walk away from a mini emission going, okay, we didn't get anything done today. We might as well just pack up and go home. We just flew these animals halfway across the world, dunked them in the water out here, and they refused to work. Nothing we could do. But I can make a dog walk with me nicely. I can make a dog come to me. I can make all sorts of things happen. All I had with those dolphins was fish, rub rope, and a whistle. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to proceed on, and we're going to teach a few more behaviors using the little clicker, and we're going to work our way through this. And I am, I promise you, I'm going to do like they used to say in the military when you didn't like doing something. Son, you need to smile, cooperate, and graduate. That's what we're going to do. We're going to smile, cooperate, and graduate. We're going to get it done. <laughs> I'm a cow dog. God, misery loves company. I'll check you guys out tomorrow.